let's just rump, jump right into it. Uh, you released your latest album, Get Rolling, on the 18th of November. It's been out for a short while now. Uh, first of all, great album. Uh, congrats on that one. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I think it has... It's, it's a nice variety to, to the album. It has, has like the, you know, the normal Nickelback hits that you would like, the ones that you get happy from a, to listening to on a summer day with a brewski in your hand. Uh, as That's well right. With the, with the heavy tracks and the ballads. So it's, it has a nice variety and also a kind of semi-country vibe to one of the songs uh, that uh, kind of got in there. Did that scare you off, the country vibe? It didn't scare me off. <laughs> it, it, it threw me off a little bit. <laughs> sure. Because oh, was, yeah. But I like that because it kind of like, when you listen to ACDC or Metallica or something like that, you know, you kind of know what you're going to get. Uh, even if it's really, really good tracks. And then that uh, that song came on and I was like, whoa, what's this? Okay, this is interesting. So it, it kind of fulfilled its purpose there. Exactly. Yeah, that's, um, I think it was, it was like early, early pandemic times. I like how we just gauge things by pandemic and when it started now yeah. still. 10 years later, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, but I, I think it was like around March or something when we were all finally just staying home. Yeah, he called. He's like, I got this. I, I sent this song over. I was working on with some other guys. And I'm like, oh, let's check it out. So I listened to it. I'm like, it's it's, it's, it's a good country song. I said, but it's like, it's country. It's too yeah. country for, <laughs> for us, I think. And it really was uh, at the time. Um, because these things kind of ebb and flow and twist and morph. And, and my... My take on it was, um, um, my, sorry, it's got a call buzzing in there. My apologies. No um, my take on it was, um, I said, I, I, I get what you're saying. I said, what if it was like, I think my reference at the time was up on Cripple Creek by the band. Where it's like, uh, when I come on, so there's a mountain. Yeah. And it's got this clav at the beginning that gives it a bit of grid and edge. And I'm like, it just would be cool if we could hear something like that. And it and it did. It gives It, it gives it a bit more, you know, southern rock kind of edge, I suppose, like the Muscle Shoals kind of style. Um, but then when Mike laid down, that, ba- that bass line is great. It really as soon is. as I heard it, Mike went in to do the bass and, and that came out. And I was just like, damn <laughs> that's that just it just it just makes it feel that feel good when he boom boom yeah doo, 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 definitely doo, 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 doo. so and and it, it's it's funny how you frame things how it makes you feel differently now if you thought if you listen to that and it was like you know same old same town going right mm. there's a guy walking down down a old western road to a saloon <laughs> you're gonna think country right yeah definitely but then but then but then we're like no we're like van picture a van everybody's in a van california coast everybody you get your buddies in there obviously they're smoking something yeah <laughs> and uh obviously i don't mean to blow it for anybody but uh and then you and it's like well it's high time you and i got rolling and it's just like a road trip down in our minds like you know down the california yeah. coast or oregon coast or your or the, the rockies in canada here and it kind of puts you in a different mindset it's like you know what i i get that i like that and so then the van came out of kind of that and the title track. And so it was, uh, it was interesting, man. It started one way and it can end up yeah. a different way, but I'm, I'm glad it's, 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 it's accessible enough in people's brains that they go, not exactly what I expected, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I can yeah, get this. Absolutely. It really fulfills that kind of purpose. Uh, yeah. talking about the album, um, how do you feel the reception has been by, by the fans and the critics now when it's been out for, for a short while? It's strange getting relatively good press. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone to a degree. Yeah. Uh, so we're just like, they they like the album, <laughs> like I'm talk, as in the critics. I'm like, really? Oh, okay. I mean, that's a that's I a like good thing. Last, it it is. It's like I like the last few. Like this one, they like. Okay, I'll take. I, I will take that. Yeah. I will take that. Because like I said, like like you you kind of mentioned, it's like it, it's it's like a Nickelback album. It's kind of across the board, and we're stretching our legs a little bit. But yeah. it's got some other stuff that we have, which I like. The last album was a was a more concerted rock effort. It was yeah. rock, and uh, and I'm glad we did that. I really want because that's what we're a rock band, but we like to listen to different things. For sure. So I'm I'm very happy that it seems to be 
being received well. The fans, most importantly, are are chiming in, just saying they they really enjoy it. I don't know if it was us going away for so long that kind of helped. I think it had something to do with it. Um, and you give people a chance to miss you a bit, maybe, or, Probably, or want to yeah. hear you again. I don't know if that's a huge element, but I think it might be an element as well. Yeah, it sounds sounds right. Um, mm. Well, I read that this album took like a few years to create, with, of course, with the pandemic and, and everything. Um, how would you describe the creating process compared like, to your latest albums before this album? This one was kind of, if I could use the phrase, a bit cobbled together. All right. Um, uh, because when we, when again, when when um, pandemic hit, it was like, you know, we're musicians; you'll still pick away at things. But we yeah. didn't get together, and we had a tour that was in just in the process of being blown off because okay. it was supposed to be the June of 2020. So all this played into our heads, where we're like, no. They were there were there was still some hope that this thing might go. So we were and it wasn't for a new album. It was for all the right reasons we were gonna do a, a front to back of that album because we mentally weren't in that place to like I, I want to create. Yeah. And um and uh and so that that's what lent itself to us kind of taking the last half of 2020 and just getting our affairs together because it was you know, everybody had stuff going on, lockdowns, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it was, but the beginning of 2021, we started going, okay, I think, I feel like it's time we can start looking at this. And so we started kind of compiling things like what's, what, what do we have that we've worked on previously that we want to use some of the stuff from two to four years, five years before. Right. So some of it recent, some of it, one of them from Chad brought a song back uh, that we were, you know, we'd known enough about uh This haven't even known you're missing was I think that was from 2007. That was but oh. that was pitched to we pitched that to Dark Horse like uh, internally going does this fit and we're like I think we've kind of got that vibe covered already. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe we'll just hang on to it. And you just don't throw them away. You just you just no. go well let's see. <laughs> yeah. And and that's that that's it's an interesting concept though because if you're talking about things that are trendy, yeah, it it won't work again. Nah. Like I mean some 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 things that you write at a certain point you're like oh my god. Some year, what was I thinking? Or that was that was very trendy at the time, but you try to make songs that can slot in anywhere. Yeah, it could be yeah. t- timeless, right? Yeah, and I'm not su- always suggesting that, but that's my aspiration. Yeah, that's this guy here. You know, <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. You know, Tom Petty makes. I mean, you can play it any time, and it just feels right. Absolutely. So you can you can only aspire to something like that. So you know, hopefully, people can, can t- you know take it and listen to it today and feel the same way, but. And then there was a a couple of songs, I mean a few songs, but the couple I, that I I I only took part in a couple of songs writing, you know, really writing wise, I'd be mean, producing across you know the board, but really writing was um, those days and uh, tidal wave. Yeah, and those were written when we got together and we kind of got in the same room. And then as we were finishing things up, then we could get together a bit more. All but right. it was kind of it was kind of separate for a while. We were just kind of blasting things up on email uh but it's nice to you know it's nice that when you get together you can kind of catch a little bit of lightning in a bottle um or you feel like you might have, have caught that tidal wave was something that just didn't feel like a nickelback song when i heard it which is why i went we got to work on that that doesn't sound like us let's <laughs> yeah. do let's do that let's one. do that <laughs> yeah and it really was and it, it was like it's it's nice to get excited over an idea and we and we were collectively Like sometimes you go, I like this, and some guys are like, Meh, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if I like it. Uh, that one was like, he called me, he's like, I got this, I just got this round and round thing that I had in between takes of doing another <laughs> song. He's like, what do you think? And I'm like, it didn't sound like Nickelback. He's like, I know. I'm like, I'll be right out. Click. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> and it was fun. It was. It's yeah. it's fun. You get when you catch those moments and you chase them as far as you can go. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you said trendy, so it just popped into my mind. Uh, talking about trends, your song uh, "She Keeps Me <laughs> Up" from uh, No Fixed Address is not like trending big on TikTok. Eight years after it was released, do you feel that it's like a bigger hit now, or like it gets the recognition that it that it deserves now? How do you feel about like eight years and like why now? We're having our micro Kate Bush moment. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, not not even close to that level. My God, no. so I'm so happy for her on that. Like, what a great Absolutely. song! Absolutely, really is that. That's the idea. What I'm talking about when you, uh, sorry, I'm a popular guy today. 
Um, <laughs> no worries. Th- that that's what I'm talking about when when you when you match something like a song with with a moment that just goes like that Stranger Things thing for her was just so perfect. Yeah, that's why that's why it just gave everybody the feels again about that because it just it just clicked. And um, I when we released No Fixed Address with She Keeps Me Up, mm. that was one of the songs. Um, I was like, and we 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 picked the singles as a band. We're like, this feels right. This feels yeah. like it should be. It's not like a, we give it to the label and they just run run away with it. Nah. Like we 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 have, we we have instinct of what what has a chance. You can never tell what's going to be a hit, but you're like, what has a chance? So that one I picked, and I'm I, as well with Chad and everybody. We're like, this is a strong song. Like this this one feels good, and our friends like it. Yeah, and it just goes <laughs> and. <laughs> And I was kind of deflated about it. I'm like, yeah, of course. I usually have a pretty, I've got a pretty good uh, gauge on that. I feel like yeah. my track record feels like it's pretty good about what, what we feel is going to click with people. Yeah. And it usually does. And that one, I was like, man, I was way off on that one. It just feels weird. But it goes to show you that, I mean, I think when No Fixed Address came out, I'm trying to think of the year, I think it was t- 2014. I mean, Nickelback had been ubiquitous for so many years. I feel that it, it, it that's part of what works against you. Yeah. Is that you just can't get away from that. And, and you don't want, and so people aren't ready to accept or hear your stuff. So I don't know if it was partly that where it just didn't get the real opportunity. And even if it did, maybe it wasn't the timing wasn't right. People didn't want no. to hear it, but right. So then you go away and this, somebody brings this song up on TikTok. Yeah. And it starts to take <laughs> off and people are like, what? That's Nickelback? I didn't like it just fits yeah, exactly. so well. That's such a, my daughter said said she's been told the song slaps, and I'm just like, it's a bit of vernacular. I'm not used to yeah, saying because it sounds stupid sure. coming out of a guy that's 49 years old. So I don't. I try not to say it more so ironically, but uh, uh, but to hear that somebody hears that song today, that's eight years old. Yeah, that it's still like we were talking about. Okay, is it? Does it feel timeless? Is it ready for 2022? Yeah. yeah. I guess it. I guess, I it, guess is. it. Yeah, for sure. Not not our choice. No, <laughs> it's nothing to do with us. It's the people running with it, and it feels good that they they they, they can rediscover that. Yeah, like, it's it was really fascinating with the, like the trends and TikTok. Really and, fascinating. Like, the, yeah, it really is. Yeah, like you have no idea how like in eight years for this song, for example, like it just blows up. For somebody shared it, somebody did it like a dance trend or something like that, and it's boom, really fascinating. Um, yeah. And you also talked like uh, about the album that you just wrote uh, a couple of songs. And a colleague of mine um, actually talked uh, to your bass player Mike, uh, and yeah. they talked about how Shad writes had the most of the material, at least for for this album. But yes. kind of likes for Nickelback. He's obviously a, like a great, great songwriter. He, he has the hits. Uh, he really knows what works. But do you think like there's a danger of having like a main, main songwriter in a band of four? Um, I think the only danger would be um, having the band painted in broad strokes because, yeah. of, because of that. Um, it's, it's one of those things where like, I wasn't, I don't think I'm a born songwriter. I think I've become a songwriter and I think I've, I've, I've done okay with it and done well with it in a lot of cases. Um, but, uh, but Chad is such a prolific songwriter. It's like, that's, he eats, lives, breathes it. That, that he yeah. does it. So it's like that, that is the case in our, in, in our band. And you have, I think at some point you internally as well, you, you have to be like, this is, this is the way that this is the best scenario for this yeah. thing. Or you could just be upset and just like, it's not going to work. Yeah, you know, okay. I've got my, I've got, I've got my own creative outlets, and 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 uh, and in in my sense, because I don't think the stuff that I do is is very Nickelback. I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that would uh, necessarily click with that. But uh, but when I do chime in uh, with stuff with with Chad, th- there's a lot of. He's the primary so- songwriter, for sure. But we chime in a lot. Uh, like the last album. Um. We like we did a lot. Like the three of us worked pretty um, heavily on "Feed the Machine," the, the yeah. title track. Yeah, 
And and then, but then Chad just had so many other songs he used to bring. He did must be must be nice, and uh, then we collaborated. I wrote the music for the Betrayal Act Three, and he oh, sang one on of my favorite lyrics. It's really, really good. Oh, there you go. So that, that so that's when we collaborated on where I I did the the. It it was the strangest. I I probably shouldn't talk about it in this interview because I talked about the other album. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's fun, it's, yeah, but it's funny how things come together. It's like and and uh, that was uh you know that was then and it's just like this album yeah. was just it, it was put together in a strange way but it's still you know it's still i i i like how it came together I, we we all picked the songs he's got yeah. some great great stuff on there so it's like it's it's great to have that because man he just you you've always got stuff to work with absolutely and he he like he has a he has a real good bead on you know what sounds what sounds good and what can sound good. Yeah. So I can't see that I can't see that being anything other than like a gold mine to have in a band. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know why you would have issues. Yeah. Yeah, you, like you said. I mean, <laughs> it's a gold mine, and like it's great that you can have that because some bands are always can can be in like any history wise that oh, but I didn't get my songs on there, so I'm gonna yes. go this way. I'm gonna quit. I didn't get to do this. It's his band. His band. So it's great that you can collaborate. And like I said, it's a fun album, and it really works because of like your collaboration on stuff that you can kind of throws you off. Like, oh shit, this song came here. Okay, okay. Like, uh, yeah, nice and, vibe. And, and Chad, you know, and Chad, Chad's very generous. I would say in, in the in the sense of like the songwriting, where he's like, he's some songwriters are like just like they don't want to do their own thing, and they and they they're like this is the way it is, and this is how I want it to sound. Where it's like we got, I think there were moments of that for him early on, and we got to the point now where it's very. Um, it's just whether, whether you contribute or not, it's a very collaborative environment. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the safe space. And that's, that's the thing that makes, I think that kind of dissipates egos yeah. to a degree because you can't be precious with things when you're trying to make a good song. As long as we're all in the same mindset, this is about the song. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't about you. I know it's going to seep in a little bit. It's going to mm. kind of be about you. And it, as it is for everybody, it's going to be about you and you and you who are sure. trying to contribute. But does this serve the song best? And we try to stay in that you know, that uh, hallway of, of of thinking. It's yeah. like, does this serve the song? So you're not just trying to get your part in there, right? No, just that, to get that's it great in. because I think it's a great great mindset because a great song is a great song, right? Uh, exactly. I really like the song "Those Days" from the album. Um, it really has like a nice feeling of looking back in the rearview mirror and remembering. The easier and the good times. Um, and Nickelback has been a, been around for a really long time now, and released some of the most memorable rock hits. Uh, if you look back at your career, that's really really long now. <laughs> What would you say are some yeah. of the biggest highlights for you that you have uh, had in Nickelback? Oh, some of the biggest highlights. Yeah, um, if you can choose, like you can choose more than one if you want to, but something sh- just pops sure. into your mind. Sure, it, it's it's funny how this like I could ask this, and it's like it's one of the hardest, one of the harder questions for me to to answer because I'm try like I don't, <laughs> I, I do we don't sit back and take stock of what we do very yeah, often, of course, and it's I, and, and I don't mean that in in any other way than just like it's like it's not in a flippant way where we're I'm trying to come across certain way. We just we just don't. Yeah. Um. So when it's brought to us, like I have to think about it. Like I, I like for sure, like playing like rock and reel was a it was 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 amazing. We've done it a couple times, and it's like it, that's something we used to see in magazines. When yeah. We were kids. Like that was just like you'd see Iron Maiden playing to a sea of people. And <laughs> yeah. Like, my God. And we got to do it. It's fantastic. Um. Playing playing Japan, we played a, a show called uh or a show at, at a venue called uh, Studio Coast, which I don't believe it's there anymore. Yeah, and uh, and we like we go back and play Budokan and the arenas there, but this time was our first kind of reintroduction. We went away for about seven years from there, and we came back just to test the waters, to see if they, you know, we just hadn't been back in forever because you know things kind of ebb and flow in yeah, different countries. Absolutely. And it was a it was a two thousand seat club, and we went and played there, and it, it's we sold two nights out like that. We went in, and the first from the first five seconds, I turned, I just kind of turned to the drummer. And I'm just like, holy fuck, <laughs> holy fuck! And we finished that show, and I felt, I, I felt like I was like a, I don't want to say kid again, but I felt like it was yeah. fresh again. Yeah. Like I can't thank those people enough because 
it doesn't matter if you're playing stadium, you're playing a club. If that feeling is right, yeah. that's what sticks in your head, and that's what's memorable. And I like that it can still happen, right? Yeah, for can, sure. People can people can get you can get inside your own shit, and you can get you can believe a lot of bullshit that happens, bad or good. Yeah, for sure. This is just it's just it's like on the cellular level, man. We felt that it was like so impressive. Oh, and I met Willie Nelson. I drank whiskey with him, and uh, my drummer spoke weed with him. <laughs> that was great. So there's that. Yeah, I mean, Such a sweet it, guy too. Isn't that a bucket list? So said, so to say. Fuck me, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this radio? Hopefully, I don't want to build some radio. So no, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> okay um, I'm a vinyl fanatic, so I read that the deluxe version or the album will come out on vinyl in uh, next year. Uh, yes. Do you know anything about if there will be any special versions of the vinyl? Is it just going to be plain black, or is it going to be colored versions? I think they're they. I, that's you know what? That's a great question. I haven't checked as to what they're putting. They've got some some special versions of songs that they might put on there. They're gonna they're they're putting different. I know that we made um, a blue wave oh. uh, vinyl for one nice. of them, and I think one of them we made is orange, and I'm not sure if they're putting different stuff on it but right. we're really trying to make an effort to make some to make some interesting stuff for people like 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 uh vinyl and content and stuff for for people that are enjoying that i'm watching my daughter starting to collect vinyl right now it's it's actually Whoa, weird nice. to think it's it's very strange to yeah. see because i used to you know you know i i i think i started in i mean there, there was i think records and eight track were kind of together at the same time and then cassettes mm. kind of seeped in But and then records went away kind of quickly for me because it was just, I mean, it was how we got introduced to it. But we, you were digesting through cassettes because it was yeah. easier and it just way easier to, to, a bit easier to pack a cassette player than a than a record player. Yeah, for sure. But I love that they're just. But I just love how they're getting back into them. Like I've got a whole just over here. I've got a whole vinyl collection here that I I've got a vinyl collection. Showed it to them. Yeah. And then she, they're just dipping into it and just loving it. So it's I I like that you can find some stuff for some people that, you know, that they can you know get on to and it excites them and I, i so i want to pay attention to that yeah that's really nice i mean like the trends we're talking we're talking about it's fun to see that stuff like just flips back either if this vinyl story is is a yeah. hit, hit from the 80s and just that has been dormant and then it's poof it's really fun to see um, we're making cassettes you I are even, for real like people yeah people well we, we we've been talking about that and i'm too pretty sure they're on that Like, that's really if, cool if something there if people want to have them like yeah sure, go ahead so yeah it's it's crazy times man <laughs> it is <laughs> last christmas i got a i got a vhs player from my from my dad i started collecting vhs no stuff way. so it's really? really fun yeah for real i'm like an oh uh, avid God. horror fan so i started collecting like the old horror movies from the 80s on on the vhs it's, it's really fun and, and it me. works yeah and it just works <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah i know i i actually we were doing a documentary here And we had we had to take some um, fine content that we've gotten. Yeah. And I got we had a few, I mean VHS tapes for sure. So I had I had to find a VHS tape <laughs> or a VHS VHS player. Yeah, like I'm going to second hand store. Do you guys have VHS <laughs> players? Everybody's like, did you just show up here from 1986? <laughs> yeah, did you time travel here. I'm like, I know it sounds ridiculous, but if, like I need it. And yeah. so I'm transfer. I'm I transferred all that shit over for a documentary. And and then I and then I just went with these tapes. I went snap. I'm like done. Like I've got them transferred. Done. Yeah. Now, now I'm hearing this, I'm like, God, it could have been. <laughs> there's a missed opportunity here. There. Yeah, so. it is. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, well, some short short questions just to wrap up uh, the interview. Sure. Uh. And now we're talking about like the vinyls and stuff. Do you? What was the latest album that you bought on uh, on like vinyl or CD or like physical copy? What was the last vinyl album I bought? Um, you know what? Give me two secs here. Yeah, take for sure. Because <laughs> I, I, I bought a few. I have, I haven't. We just moved not long ago, so I haven't been playing or, or buying much vinyl. Yeah. Lately, um, I. But uh, what was the one? Well, this is this is. I, I had this on CD, but I, I or on CD. I had this digitally, but I got. Uh, This oh, good yeah. copy of Foo Fighters, Wasted great Night, album. of course. I mean, such a good album. It really Dear good. Rosemary. Rope's great. Dear Rosemary is great. White Limo is... I love yeah. that riff. riff. It's just so it's like great. A best, it's like um, a studio album, but it's kind of like a best of album. It's so many hits on it. Oh, oh, almost, right? Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, Yeah, I've, I've, I've got that. Um, 
I don't know. I just listening to different things. My daughter's, we just got her pick, uh, Pixies album. Uh, I can't, I cannot, I never really got into them as, it, when I was younger, but I do like yeah. them. Like the one with where, where's my wow. mind or here comes your man, you know, the, they're big hits and she's just loving that kind of stuff. Um, I, I am currently listening to what's the, I'm listening to some weird stuff these days. There's a guy named <laughs> J- Jake, Jake Thackray. I got never, never heard of him. It's, no, I'd never heard him either. He's from like <laughs> the, I think the late sixties, seventies or the eighties. Right. He's a Brit- British guy. It's, he sings very Britishly, ah. <laughs> but he's very, he's very, po- he's very poetic. Okay. It's so like cool. you're listening to a Tim Burton film. It's, it's, Whoa. it's really, well, there's a song called, uh, the Castleford Ladies Magic Circle or something right. strange. Definitely. Uh, I, I, well, I, 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 I'm a fan of Neil Gaiman, uh, the, the, uh, the author. I've yeah. read his books for years. And, uh, and he mentioned it in an article. I'm like, oh, he's like, yeah, there's this guy. He just, he's a really quirk, quirky, interesting <laughs> dude. So I checked it out. I'm like, it's very, it's not what I would normally listen to, but I actually really yeah. like it. It's like, it's very interesting. Yeah, that's uh, fun. But yeah, so there's, it's fun when you can like find find stuff outside your normal box or comfort zone that is not knowing. Okay, completely. I like hard rock, but then you listen to a completely different genre and like, whoa, I like this. That's my oh head. yeah, <laughs> exactly. But that that's that's it for me. It's like I yeah. can't sit, I can't stay in the box. I no, of I course. love listening to different things. I've got the Mastodon album. Uh, oh yeah, well, great. Where, with uh, the Curl of the Burrow, where you yeah. you get the vinyl. And you and I think you had to hook it up to this camera, and it would. This was at the time when you weren't doing this before. It would lock up mm. the face of that that I don't know if it's a buffalo or whatever it is. Yeah. And you could lock your face on it. It would move with you. Like <laughs> that's cool. Just crazy shit. Like that's 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 a great that's a great album too. So. Nice. Uh, well, speaking of albums, uh, if you have to choose one, I know it's probably going to be hard. But do you have like one album that made the most impact on you on your for your songwriting? Like what made you go into the rock genre or playing guitar? Um, I will. Well, I, I'll I'll say this. I, I'm going to say two albums. Yep, for sure. And uh, and they won't be rock uh, because this is more about because it won't. I don't like. I I started playing rock guitar because because of of, of a lot of rock bands and, yeah. and I could name a bunch of them, but. I, I kind of think that what's what's stuck with me more is more like a sensibility uh, of of a couple of different an artist in a band. So I'm a I'm personally I'm a huge um, Police and Sting fan. Oh, nice. I just I, I for, for for years when I when I when I first heard um um all this time um because I don't think I wasn't quite there yet I, I hadn't discovered it when he put out a uh, dream of blue turtles mm. after the police kind of went um the fact that you could he was almost one of the ones where you could kind of write like whatever you wanted to write yeah like he had some rock these police it's yeah of course fucking banging rock songs <laughs> yeah right yeah like and then uh and then you listen to all this time or or um or on Dream, Dream Blue Turtles, like Russians, mm. you know, taking Prokofiev uh, orchestra and then adding it to a song. You know, I hope the Russians love their children too. You know, it's, it's a political song. And, um, uh, but then you hear, you hear, uh, be still my beating heart. Yeah. Amazing. And it just, just, it almost hypnotic. And then, I, and I mentioned this in another article before, but like he, he, he'll have like, he'll have like uh, words that I just like, I hadn't heard before or phrases I haven't heard before. And sometimes that's a songwriter is like, I, I won't, I'll, I won't necessarily do that because I want everybody to be able to relate to it. Okay. But it <laughs> intrigues me. Yeah. That intrigues me. And so it makes me want to learn more about it. Yeah. What the fuck is alabaster? Yeah, exactly. what, are the exactly. sin, what are what are the Sinla and Charybdis? Charybdis? Yeah. What? What? You know, you know, you know. Uh, I will turn your face to alabaster when you find your servant is your master yeah. wrapped around your finger. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I, like, 
you just wanted to get that in a song. You wanted yeah, to see if you could do it. Sure. And, and guess what? You it worked. did it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. My I won't I won't try I'll try not to be as long as some of them, but my other one is there's a band out of Canada called Blue Rodeo. And I just weirdly enough saw them last night in Vancouver. Oh. And they were so great. They have two lead singers, they have two songwriters. Yeah. And they, they kind of go back and forth. And they were they're kind of like they're country, people call them country rock, but they're almost they were almost rockabilly country right. rock when they first came out but they were too rock for country and too country for rock so ah, it, was, okay. it was hard for to kind of slot them at the time yeah uh, I, I i feel but for me it was just like everything made sense the fact that they could just sit down and write a great song and create great imagery and the harmonies that's why i sing harmonies yeah is because of those guys and they had an album called five days in may have to check it out which oh i'm just i i don't i don't know how like out of time i'm not sure how that that plays because this was like in the late 80s it came out and it was it it ran counter to everything i was listening to oh like i listened to metal or pop and something like that and these guys had this jang, 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 jang. Mm. it's just like it was more acoustic -y but upbeat kind of album with some with some ni nice points of that yeah but just their songwriting and the way that they crafted the song and the way that they put their harmonies together it's funny the soup that gets made yeah. out of all the shit in your brain, right? Where it's like, I like people, you can't draw a straight line from harmonies. Why I sing harmonies in Nickelback to Blue Rodeo. I don't think anybody would have done that. Uh, no, but I would, try, I would but, try to do it when I listen to them. <laughs> but it's there. But they just, they, I wasn't a virtuoso guy. They were just like, sit down, play a song, sing a song, write a song, sing a song. Yeah. Something you could do around a campfire. That's what yeah. I loved about it. So those, those kind of two things have always stuck with me when I'm trying, when I'm trying to create something. And, and uh, it's a nice touchstone to to call back on. Great answer. Um, I'm gonna for sure check out the the later of the the uh, bands that you mentioned. Uh, super thanks for uh, doing this interview with me. It's gonna come up oh, on uh, our blog, blog that's called Maluk Rock Blog here in Sweden. Uh, hope you have a really nice day, and I hope to see you uh, down the road somewhere. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Like your hoodie, it's cool. Yeah, thank you, man.